Hello and welcome to my next class. In my last class, we all did 15th century part 2 in which we covered the Scottish poetry which we have poets the John Barber and then we did Robert Henry. Today we will be dealing with William Dunbar, Gwan Doglos, some ballads and prose works of 15th century. Right? So without wasting time, let's start with William Dunbar. When we talk about William Dunbar, he was a strong poet as a satirist. So please remember that because he was a satirist, so he was a strong poet because his poems are generally based on a satire. Now the very first poem that we see was The Thistle and the Roses which is a love allegory. Now, what this poem is about? It celebrates the marriage of James, which I have mentioned here, James hai, and Margaret the Rose. Now, who was James? He was a king of Scotland and Rose, that means Margaret, she was a princess of England and she was a daughter of Henry VII. So the very first poem that we see of William Dunbar is The Thistle and the Rose. Now the second poem that we are going to have a look that is The Golden Touch. Now this is again a love allegory where a poet he is in a dream and he visits the court of Venus. And there he is attacked by the arrows of beauty. And when he gets attacked, he gets wounded, but reason try, tries to defend him by a golden targe or shield, you can say. But uh, later, reason gets defeated, and when he becomes a prisoner, that means a poet, now he, he becomes a prisoner as reason is defeated. So he comes across the beauty of the lady, but later, the noise of ship awakes him and he wakes with pleasure because in the court of Venus he has seen such a beauty so he wakes up with a pleasure. Later he comes to know that he was in a dream. So the golden Taj. Please don't forget this is important and Taj means shield. Right? Now if we talk about his other works they are the two married women and a widow now in this poem, uh, this is this poem is a fair satire on woman, right? The friars of Berwick, that means a friar is a monk, and this is again a scandalous tale uh, of um, you can uh, who uh, who all are involved in this are uh, a friar and a farmer's wife, right? Now in Flying Dunbar and Neddy, this is again a um, these uh, they, where uh, you can throw something with a great force so here is a conversation which is abusive for each other now the last uh, poem in his other works are the lament for the makers now this lament for the makers makers head equals to poets and this is an elegy on the dead poets Right? This is an elegy. Hai. Elegy is uh, who is dead. Un pe likhi jati hai. Right? So, uh, here a poet uh, generally has been known as Scotsman. Ko hi liya hai. And he represents himself with sadness, the shortness of the life. He tells about the shortness of the life. And that everything that we have in this world is for the short time. All earthly things. So, this poem is based on that, right? Now, we have one of the powerful work of Dunbar poetry is the Dance of Seven Deadly Sins. Now, in uh, the Dance of Seven Deadly uh, Sins, if we see, we have 12 line stanzas, right? Uh, there are 12 line, uh, this poetry is based on 12 line stanzas and in this poetry, devil makes seven deadly sins perform dance in hell right so if we see here that anger and envy uh, here they are represented with symbolic vividness 
right so if we see william dunbar important poems are the golden taj and seven deadly sins so you should know about william dunbar ke bare mein humne kafi kuch padha so he was a satirist then the very first poem that i told was the thistle and the rose next poem the golden taj then we have his other works and the most powerful work of dunbar was the dead dance of seven deadly sins right now we'll be talking about the next poet that is guan doglos so moving on so here we start with guan doglos now when we talk about this author he the very first translation that he did was 12 books of aeneid now when we talk about aeneid the original author of aeneid was virgil but gondoglas bought its translation in the form of 12 books and there he included his own prologue that means he inserted some of his own prologues and he gave a vivid picture a description of different seasons in a form of different colors and in several meters means in this translation there were several meters were used they were rhyme royal octave and several others and that was not common in the middle age now this was called the classic translation in british language right so in his prologue when he wrote this prologue it was highly appreciated and liked by everyone and so he became famous for this translation please remember this this work is important now moving on he wrote an allegory and began his career with the palace of honor and later king hart now in these two poems if we see the palace of honor it is a dream allegory that means a poet he is in dream and he is in quest of he wants to know that where lies the true honor so for, for uh, in the in his way from court to the palace he is trying to find out that where lies the true honor so this is the main theme of the poem palace of honor right now when we move on to the poem the king heart it is also called or heart right it shows an interesting and fascinating picture of human life now how it shows an interest interesting and fascinating picture of human life here the king who lives in a castle now castle hair is compared to our body a king living in his castle that means a body and he is surrounded by five servants five servants are his five senses and he is trapped by pleasures that is pleasure all the worldly pleasures that he is trapped in and how it will go it will go and he'll be freed by all these things only by age that means when he will die so this is an interesting poem which is based on human life right so this was all about guan doglos now we would like to move on and let's see the ballads so moving on with ballads now when we talk about ballads now what is a ballad first of all we should know what is a ballad ballad are the short tales or love songs in the form of verse that means it is about the common people and it is expressed in a natural and simple form these were the lo love songs or you can say a short tale was told through these ballads right it had a rugged rhythm but they were simple in form right the origin of ballad that came 
uh, into limelight was in 15th century uh, but uh, people say that there are evidences of a ballad in 14th century and uh, a poem called uh, Judas uh, it was called the earliest ballad of all and the earlier ballads were also of that of Robin Hood so uh, people used to say that they have been sung before 1377 but the main ballads that came into limelight was 15th century ballad so the very two important ballads of 15th century are Chevy Chase and the Nut Brown Maid now what Chevy Chase is about Chevy Chase is based on the theme of the fight between two lords Percy of Northumberland and Douglas of Scotland. It is a fight between two that I've told. And this ballad, through this ballad, we can depict the border life in real sense. Means uh, it reveals the chivalry and heroism of warriors in the form of songs. So through this, we come to know about the life, border life, how they are right now as these ballads were written by uh, when Coleridge saw Chevy Chase he was really influenced and he gave a new harmony to his poems that is ancient Mar mariners and Christabel please remember this is important that Coleridge, Coleridge got influenced by Chevy Chase and that is shown in his ancient marina and Krista Bell. Now moving on to the next ballad that is the nut brown maid. Her maid, uh, she's a baron's daughter and her, li uh, her life is explained and her life is compared to that of Griselda as she was tested constantly in her love now uh, she is visited by her lover and uh, he comes to bid her farewell uh, and he is a low grade square according to the brown maid hair uh, as he has murdered a man so he comes to say farewell but the maid say that whether ups or down I will follow you and I want to be there with you so by her faithlessness in love he reveals that he was an old son and he was testing her so this is all about so Chevy Chase and the nut brown maid these are the important ballads of 15th century so here we are done with ballads now moving to the last part of 15th century that means prose writing in 15th century prose of 15th century the very first work of 15th century was the Paston letters it is an exchange of ordinary letters between the families of that age the writers cover all sort of topic it in like living property buying etc right Paston letter का जो author है वो unknown है ये एक simple letters थे जो हम exchange करते थे पहले they were the ordinary letters between families of that age now the second that is Thomas Mallory he is known for his work Morte de Arthur it was printed in 1485 by Caxton now what this book consists of Thomas Malley is uh, he's mainly famous for this book Morte de Arthur please remember and when it was printed it was printed in 1485 now this book consists of several tournaments and battles uh, so here it is apt that modern readers will become tiresome in reading this right now moving on with William Caxton he was known first he was the first known English printer but he was also a prose writer right 
uh, history of the prose writings that I've mentioned is Requiem of the Histories of Troy and the Game and the Play of the Chess. You just have to remember their name and William Caxton, we all know. He's very famous for his English printer, right? Now, the main thing that he's known for that the prose that he used to write was in a simple language and it gave clarity to the prose writing. So please remember he's famous for this that he used simple language and he gave clarity to the prose writing. Last we have Reginald Peacock. He wrote two prose works and they are The Repressor of Overmuch Blaming of the Clergy and The Book of Faith. Please remember his two works, The Repressor of Overmuch Blaming of the Clergy and The Book of Faith. You just remember their name, right? So here we end with 15th century. Now class, side by side, I'll be taking two types of lecture, like we'll move on with 16th century in my next lecture. Secondly, I will take foreign writers too, because time is less. And I would like to cover American writers, French writers, Russian writers. So I will go on with that too. So do not miss my lecture and please subscribe my channel. And if you have any query, you can always ask. Thank you and see you again.